Retro Rob plays everything. Hey there, real gamers. Retro Rob here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ambernic RG350. And it is an interesting little device based on open dingox. We're not going to go into severe depth because I guess the HDMI out is not working on it yet, and I want to wait for that to be working before I do like a full walkthrough of all the features, but I am gonna feature a little bit of gameplay in this video, and there will be a lot of talk about the general construction of the device. Basically an unboxing and first impressions video. Actually, really, I just lost the original intro, and I'm re-recording it now, and I can't remember what I said. I, I said a bunch of stuff, and then basically, this is the front of the box. which is pretty generic. Model number RG350. This looks like a knockoff of the rare symbol, doesn't it? Like a generic knockoff? <laughs> Just saying. The right side of the box informs us that there's a console, a charging cable, and a user manual. It also tells us this is gray. Hey, there's a transparent one? I want the transparent one. The left side of the box tells you that it's a 3.5 inch, 320 by 240 full view IPS screen with super tempered glass. That means it has really good temperament. For those of you who don't know, one gigahertz, one gigahertz processor uh, running DDR 512 megs, which is a little bit low, I think, but not so low for these devices. They don't need as much RAM because the OS isn't as big, so we might be okay here. It's got a built-in 16 gig TF card. Uh, it's well, type C, so it's a USB type C. That's actually pretty good. So I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, it says it'll get six hours of battery life and it can have up to 64 gigs, which we will almost certainly go to the max with. The top of the box is pretty functional. You know, it's a nice clean look, if not, you know, overly exciting. It does look competent, so, you know, okay box art. The bottom of the box. If Apple did this, we'd all be praising it. The bottom of the box is Tabula Raza. That's blank slate, folks. Nothing there. All right, folks on three. One, two, three. Oh yeah. Let's take a look inside. Well, it has this nice little rubberized cover to protect the analog sticks. I like that. A couple points for class. We'll look at this in a moment. And there should be something underneath here. I'm having a hard time with English today. English is a first language. All right, there we go. USB to USB-C charger. It's nice and thick, that's good. It should charge rather quickly. Um, I have not run into many devices that don't charge well on USB-C, although, you know, there's always time for a first. Here's the manual. In color. In Chinese. And uh, by the American point of view, it opens backwards. There we go, though. As usual, we've got some screenshots of the OS. There's very little chance I will keep the original uh, image on here, but we'll see how it goes. You'll know really quick because uh, if I don't like the image much, it's uh, it's just not going to stay. You're like the next scene. I'm going to have it changed out. All right, let's look at the device itself. Hmm. Nice heft. It feels good. Uh, yeah, I like this. So, got a couple of analog sticks. These are unusual. They are bigger than what I expected. These are bigger than what you would get. Hold on a second. There we go. They're bigger than what you get on this. It's not that they're, if you look, like their surface area is about the same, but they stick up. See that? Get here, let's zoom in a little bit. Can you see that? They stick up a little bit higher. Uh, which makes them feel like they got more give. There's no problem with these. I really like these. In fact, these were my favorite thus far. But these feel pretty good too. Um, a little more plasticky maybe. But yeah, they got buttons underneath them. So you've got buttons under here. That's good. A, B, X, Y. They feel pretty good. They're a little bit small, but they're spongy. They feel good. If you like a spongy button, you're going to like these. Yeah. Start select. Not rubberized, D-pad, 
Yeah, it feels okay. We'll see how that works out. Going on to the front, looks like we got a couple of speaker grills here. On off button, TF card, volume up, volume down, reset button. Right side, nothing. Top, we got stuff all over the place. Uh, and this is one of the big draws to this thing. You've got an HDMI out, uh, you got AV out, uh, headphone jack, and it looks like USB ports. Yeah, it says USB 1, USB 2 for charging, and I guess there's a pass-through so you can add things to it. That is something I'm going to have to investigate before I say anything more about it. Pretty cool though. And there's the bottom of the unit. Has a really nice feel to it. All right, I'm going to go try it out and get back with you. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe or I will go Skynet on your butt. All right, gamers, for you it's been but a moment, but for me it's been a week and a half, and I have so much to say about this. It's not going to be super in-depth, and the reason for that is the firmware in this device is continually under development, and it changes a lot, uh, even from week to week. So I don't want to steer you wrong on anything that is very specific on it. So you might want to wait for future videos if you're looking for some specific thing. I'm going to mention right now that I'm running 1.5 firmware. Those of you who are eagle eyes are going to notice that this menu doesn't look like 1.5 firmware, but it absolutely is. I just uh, reskin the menus uh, to look more like 1.7 because I prefer that menu. Uh, but one of the problems I have with the 1.7 firmware is uh, Quake 2 was crashing every time it saved. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, because I like playing Quake 2 on this and that would make this the absolute first device that I've ever liked playing Quake 2 on that wasn't a computer. But we'll go a little bit more into that and I will show you some gameplay even though I'm not going to go a whole lot into it. I'm just going to talk a lot about the physical and my general opinion of the device. But anyway, as far as the construction goes, uh, really nice. It feels great in the hands. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the analog sticks are great. These buttons are okay. They look a little weird. I'd, I'd really love to get some custom buttons for these. I'm going to have to go look around and see if there are some. The D-pad works really well. I've heard a couple complaints that the surface of this uh, comes off or wears off easily. I haven't had that problem. I've played it quite a bit. Um, when you're forced to use the D-pad, which you are sometimes in emulators, if it doesn't support the analog stick, it works fine. It's a little bit too far to the bottom, but that's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's kind of how you suffer with this uh, this kind of thing. Like handhelds just have only so much room, but the D-pad itself responds really well and it's pretty great. Had the same thing with uh, these top buttons. They seem to work really great. In game, they're very useful and yeah, it just feels generally good in the hands. I'm, I'm very happy. Ditto for the screen. I really love the fact that it's a 4.3 format just makes the games look pretty good and the low resolution makes them look really good and they seem to run pretty smooth uh, except for uh, N64. I'm gonna show you that too. Uh, but uh, man, PlayStation games, I absolutely love playing on this and this has become my main PlayStation emulation system because it, it just, the compatibility is really good and really works well. I'm I'm blathering about it but uh, here's some of the negatives and one of the reasons why I'm not going deeper into this uh, device at this point. Uh, number one, I haven't been able to get HDMI output to work at all. If you guys have any suggestions on that, let me know, but I think it might just be broken. Next issue that I have with it is it can be a little bit difficult to find out where exactly to put some of the files for games like Quake 2 or Quake or the other ones. And my uh, my 1.7 image has it pretty much fully stocked with all these, but I haven't redone it because the um, it just uses a lot of different directories to do it. And because everything's changing, those file locations can change and not a lot of documentation on how to do that. However, I did find a space uh, that does describe where they're all supposed to go, and I will link that down below for you if you want to. Uh, the other thing is that this image that I've got right here, really, uh, it came with emulators on it, but it didn't come with a whole lot in this section here. In fact, it was completely blank in this section. So I had to add my own OPKs, which is, that's not that big of a deal, uh, but, this does not have wireless on it, 
and when you plug it in it basically here I'm going to show you that when you plug it into your computer it basically sets up a little network and you hit network here and I don't have anything plugged in uh, but it will give you an IP address and you have to install a driver to get that to work so that's another thing I'll try and link out for you so you've got the right driver you plug it into this port, not this one, don't plug it into USB 1, plug it into USB 2, and then you log into it and you use an FTP uh, client to connect to it and drop your ROMs in that way. And, and I can go into that in more detail if you'd like, so if you do want that video, uh, do me a favor and just drop me, a, drop me a comment down below and I will get right to it as soon as I can. Uh, more stuff. Well, you know what? There's not a lot more that I dislike about it, to be fair. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, so I think I'm just going to start showing you some games and such. Here we have MAME for All. This also came with MAMEX on it. I removed it, largely because I'm familiar with MAME for All. Uh, one of the nice things that I really do like about this is when it first starts up, I get to select the ROM directory. I don't have to put it in a specific place. It makes it so much better to deal with. And one of the other things that I really like about this, there was a pause there, is when I choose a ROM with this thing, I can generally expect it to actually play the ROM, load and play the ROM, which just doesn't freaking happen in these uh, open Dingux players. They just, man, like 70% of the ROMs for me, just don't work. But on this thing, works constantly. I've only had a couple where it didn't actually work with my ROM set. I'm very happy about this. I think the sound doesn't work on this one, though. Oh, yeah, it does. And I'm going to play awful. Holy crud. I'm a hammer. Hammering! One of my few complaints about this system is the sound is pretty janky. And it's not the emulation of the sound that's janky. It's just the sound is very tinny. It can get very loud, though. That's a plus. So if you want loud, tinny sound, it'll work great. Fortunately, you can use headphones, so there's that. But really, really good emulation. I mean... Again, emulation, in my opinion, is never perfect. It's never the best way to go. But this does a really nice, nice job. All right, another quick note about the emulator. And that is, if I hit these two buttons, I go into the config menu. And I can change many of the settings from here. But one thing I haven't figured out is how the heck to get out of this emulator. So every time I have to hit the restart button. So if anybody knows the answer to that riddle, let me know in the comments down below. Weird, right? N64 emulation is in its infancy on this system. It's pretty clear that with a little bit of work, it will probably work pretty well. I've only tested a couple games on it. Star Fox didn't work at all for me. And uh, Mario Kart, was running subpar. This runs okay. Uh, definitely does need some work. It's dropping frames every once in a while and the sound is really pretty skippy. Uh, again, it's not the way you'd really want to play this game, I don't think, but it's getting closer, you know? I mean, eventually, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to play N64 games comfortably on this. It's just not quite there yet. But, as you can see, it's really not terrible. I guess you could play it if you really wanted. Just not how I'd do it. This is currently my favorite device to play PlayStation on. Except for maybe the PlayStation itself. It is just great. I've played about, I don't know, seven or eight different games on it and a lot of it is stuff I generally don't play and it has just been great as far as emulation goes I mean it has really really done the job uh, very smooth frame rates 
the games look and play wonderfully. Just really not a lot of trouble with it. Uh, one thing I am going to note, actually there's a few things I'm going to note. I'm going to press this bottom button right here, the power button. And that's going to bring us into the menu. And there are some changes you may need to make. First thing is in core settings. Make sure that that HLE emulation BIOS is off. Then set your BIOS file. Make sure you download a BIOS file. And hit A. You can put it wherever you want because you can browse to it. Mine's just in my directory with everything else. There we go. And that sets a BIOS file. I don't know why it doesn't show up here, but it does on 1.7. But anyway, you want to set that because you want the BIOS in place, of course, uh, the correct one. The other thing you want to set is, I, you don't have to set this. If you're using digital mode and you want to use this as your D-pad, then you want to set analog arrow keys to on. And back to main menu, one other thing. If you are seeing a frame rate, it annoys the heck out of me. Just turn that to off. Then back and back. And there we go. Really cool and works really well. See how fast and smooth everything is? This is really, really good and enjoyable. Winner. I would feel really sad if I did not do at least one quick round of Mr. Driller. Here we go. By the way, this version of Mr. Driller is essentially a roguelite because you only have one life to live. Okay, that's only one factor in being a roguelite. So, you know, whatever. There I go. Game over. Because I suck. All right, for the last game, we're going to look at Quake 2. And I know this has run on other open Dingux devices before, but it's nothing you'd really play. I mean, you'd show it to your friends and go, that's pretty cool, you know, and move on. But it's actually enjoyable here because the right stick aims and the left stick moves. And you can fire with the shoulder buttons as if it was a regular console game. This is the first time I've enjoyed playing this game since I played it with the mouse and the keyboard back when it came out. And I'm probably going to finish it now because I can just do it at my leisure. I mean, this really was well thought out and well implemented. It plays smooth. It's enjoyable. I mean, really, just a lot of fun. And I think it looks really good on the handheld because it's playing at a low enough resolution that this is basically how you would have played it back in the day. Really, really cool. And I am pretty happy about it. That gets a thumbs up from me right there. There's the thumb. It's up. One other quick note. While Quake 2 and Quake 3 do use a dual stick configuration, Quake 1 does not yet. It uses kind of this reverse dual stick, which is obnoxious as heck. So it will have like this be forward, this is back, right, left. And then you use the analog stick on the left side to aim. I just can't stand it because I play enough console games that that configuration feels odd. It is the same as how the Dreamcast used to do it, but that's not great. Another game where they did that is Duke Nukem, and uh, unfortunately that makes the game, for me, not as enjoyable. That said, you can always remap them, so it's not a deal killer by any means, but you cannot use this stick on those games yet. So hopefully they'll port them over in a way that you'll be able to use those though in the future. All right, so the question I'm gonna be asked almost certainly is, is this my favorite device now? And I would say that it is the most powerful open Dingux handheld I've ever experienced by a pretty good shot. If you are willing to spend some time with it, if you're willing to put in the elbow grease required to make this thing run well, and you're willing to wait for all the features to be implemented in it, 
I would say that the future of this device is bright. And it's only like 20 bucks more than this one. So almost certainly I'd go with that. However, if you want something that's gonna work pretty easily and you're not willing to wait for the features to be fully implemented, you'll be better off with something like the LDK, which is a little bit easier to use and a little bit friendlier for beginners. All in all, am I happy I bought this? At about 100 bucks, I think it was a little bit less than 100 bucks. Yes, I'm definitely happy with it. I'm definitely gonna keep playing with it and I'm gonna definitely do more videos on it. Uh, however, it is definitely not a beginner level device. You're gonna need some expertise, but if you got it or are willing to learn, I'd give it a thumbs up. I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Uh, also, if you have questions, if there's anything you wanna see in a video, like anything I've configured on this thing, let me know in the comments down below and I will try and make you a video on it. Thanks for watching.